see you. Thank you for being here at Metaview United Methodist Church. Today is not only Memorial Day, it's also Trinity Sunday. So uh, we're celebrating two things today. I'm Wayne Parlier, pastor of Metaview United Methodist Church, and I'm certainly glad that you're here, and I'm also appreciating those people that watch our DVDs, and not only watch them, but pass them on to other people. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, for our announcements today, uh, our Bible study will, will not meet until June the 2nd, uh, that's next Sunday night. Uh, bingo, every Tuesday night, uh, we want to meet some people there. And somebody was asking me the other day, how many members have we got from bingo? Well, I don't know that we've really got any members, but we have supported <coughs> the Draper Backpack Program by giving them uh, $200 this past year and about that same amount the previous year. So, uh, you know, we're still hoping to get some people into the church through Bingo, but we're also, uh, you know, it's a good mission uh, attached to it. So, so it's, it's, there is a reason for doing it in many ways. Invite, invite, invite. And when they get tired, just keep on inviting. Uh, Pray for the persecuted Christians of this world, and some of them are right here in our country. Remember our mission statement, remember food for Draper Elementary, and it needs to have an expiration date of September 2013. Many people, it's a big difference between the numbers today. I was uh, shocked when I walked in the other day. I came last Sunday afternoon with Nick to straighten up a little bit and looked up here on the board and saw 91. I was telling Joe how I go, my goodness, maybe he and I need to miss another Sunday once in a while to have such numbers. So uh, I, I think there's a reason for that 91. But uh, anyway, I, I appreciate every single person that comes every single Sunday. Diane knows the secret to the 91. Uh, our district superintendent is going to be here July the 30th. We're going to need to do electrical planning, uh, a little extra uh, brainstorming before then, as some of us meet with her that morning. Uh, check out YouTube. We've got some services on that. On June the 8th, 5.30, we've got a cookout, and I want to take a little bit of time uh, after we eat and actually do some brainstorming about uh, ways that we can uh, reach out into the community. And I want you to think about, uh, you know, what kind of cookout you want. Whether you want hot dogs, hamburgers, shish kebab, just a covered dish meal, or what. And I, I'll, I'll certainly talk with some of the ladies this week uh, before we put out a sign-up sheet next Sunday. So uh, be thinking about what kind of meal you would like. I appreciate Nick Parlier. Uh, leading our service last Sunday. I've heard many good comments. I've, I've watched the DVD. It did an excellent job. Nick, thank you for being here and doing that for us. Uh, annual conference is June the 19th through the 23rd. Nick and I will be going from Metaview Church, and uh, Joe will not be here on June the 23rd, which is Conference Sunday. So I've asked Reverend Leroy Joyce if he would speak for us um, that Sunday, June the 23rd. Uh, according to our calendar of events, uh, we need to take up a love offering for our circle of friends. I didn't remember to put that in the bulletin last Sunday for today, so if you would like to make a contribution today, there are love offerings on your uh, pew. Uh, also, we'll, we'll also take up you know, a love offering next Sunday for the circle of friends. And uh, we certainly want to encourage them and hopefully get some uh, more members to help with, with their work. They have good ideas. Uh, right now their membership is dying. And I uh, certainly want to keep them in our prayers. Do we have other announcements that we would like to share this morning? Do we have any birthdays last week or this coming week? Anniversaries.
Let us stand for our national anthem as we're able to stand, and then we'll say pledges to our flags and our Bible. to the American flag, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll say our pledge to our Christian flag. Again, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for his kingdom it stands, one Savior crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty for all who believe. And then we'll say our pledge to our Holy Bible. Again, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, I will hold his words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Thank you. Now we will join together with our call to worship as we find in our bulletin, please. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes you have found a bulwark. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. If you'll open your hymn book, please, to Holy, 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 number 64. 64, let's sing the first and the last verse. 64.
responsive reading of Psalm 15 is found on page 747. 747. O Lord, who shall abide in my tent, or your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? One who walks blamelessly, and does what is right, and speaks truth from the heart. Who does not slander with the tongue, and does not evil to a friend, nor takes up a reproach against a neighbor? And who is eyes reproach is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord? But who does not put out money at interest, and does not take a bribe against the innocent. The one who does these things shall never be moved. Thank you, and be seated. Can anyone share ways that God may have blessed you this past week? I went to a wedding uh, last weekend, and then the couple was just a really godly guy, a really godly girl, and, and uh, it was just a really pretty union that God has put together. Very good. Others? You know, I look at uh, plants that we might plant in our, our garden and in our, in our yards and so forth, and see how the rain and the sun has caused these to, to start growing and uh, the tomato plants blooming and so forth and you know it's, it's, it's wonderful that God has blessed us with, with nature as, as it is and uh, hopefully uh, later on we'll have some fruits of, of these plants that we've spent our time and effort on. Anyone else? Certainly we're thankful for all the blessings that God sends our way. We're thankful for this church. We're thankful for the people that call Meadowview home. And for the work that each one of you do for the Lord here at this church. We have many to lift up. We want to lift up Roy and Peggy. Peggy called me this morning and uh, Roy was weeding yesterday and got in some poison oak. And he's having a time with poison oak right now. So certainly keep him in your prayers for, for that reason and others. Uh, lift up the nation of Israel. The jobless people. Uh, our unemployment rate is still about 11.9% in Rockingham County, which is very, very high. Lift up our military. Elma Pratt, Ray Land, Lewis Clark, Matthew Newman, Matthew Marsuvian. Samuel Joyce, Sybil Stroud, Roy Campbell, Peggy's sister, Ruby Cardwell, Michaela Kendrick, those suffering for Christ, Betty and Monk Jarrett, Lisa Juanita Robertson, Noah Putnam, Cameron Perdue, Dr. Raymond Clark, Cole Parlier, Cole's up in uh, Chicago, and uh, he's working to establish a church up there, along with doing some really good work to put food on the table. So uh, it's a long way from home. Uh, Peggy's daughter, Mr. and Ms. Bob Teeters, uh, Dolores uh, McCracken, uh, Loretta Whitesell, Truett Marcel Parlier. Our schools and our schools are out right now. Teachers still have to work a few days. And of course, administrators and custodians and all will be working on through the, the summer. Uh, Peggy's son-in-law, Diane Sozio. Carol Turner, Jimmy and Missy, Ellen Powell, Unspoken Request, Wilbur Bowitt, Billy's brother, Don Overby, Mike, uh, Luann Joyce is doing much better, and we were, we're thankful for that. Um, Harold Grove, Freddie Donkey, uh, Godkey, uh, Don Helton, uh, Joey Sinetti, Francis Alcorn, uh, Tom Parrish, Rhonda Gertrude Birch, Ashley Shockley, Carolyn, Shirley and James Stevens, and Shirley's not feeling well today. Uh, Robert Elric, 
Matthew Thomas, Gail Dalton, Doug Dalton, Francis Horsley, um, Dylan Phillips, uh, Brendan Norton, that's the principal at Holmes Middle School, had some surgery. Uh, Marty Self, Bubba Ratliff, uh, Orrin and Vivian Swayton, they're on their way back from Orrin's sister down in South Carolina. We also want to especially lift up uh, Orrin at this time. Uh, Hazel Bumgarner, uh, she uh, was married to my dad's first cousin and she also kept me when I was just a little baby and uh, she's had to go to a nursing home recently and uh, also kept Nick and Amanda for a little bit. Uh, when they were small. Do we have others that we want to mention by voice today? But individual requests both lift of hand. Let us pause for our meditation and our prayers. Dear Father, we thank you so much for always being with us. We thank you for those people that fought in various wars and gave the ultimate sacrifice of their lives that we might have freedoms today. Father, we also thank you for this special Sunday of Trinity Sunday where we think about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and what these three persons mean to us in our religious faith. Lord, be with all of those that are sick, those that are worried about their health, those that are facing medical treatment, those that have pain, Heal their bodies, remove their pain. Father, be with those that are grieving. Bring them peace and comfort. Lord, be with those that are looking for jobs. Help them not to get discouraged, but to keep searching. And, and Father, we ask that industry might come to our area, that here in Rockingham County we would have jobs to offer so people would stay here. Father, be with those that are being persecuted today because of their faith in you. Whether some foreign country where their churches are burned and their Bibles are burned and they're put in jail and killed. Or whether it's in this country where people are suppressed, people lose jobs because of their faith. Father, we ask your blessings upon us. Strengthen us, deepen our faith, remind us that we need to spend time reading your holy word, we need to spend time in prayer, and we need to listen to you, not only just talk to you. Father, we ask a special blessing upon this service and this church. Help us that we might find ways that we can reach out into the community. Ways that we can encourage our own members and, and attenders to, to come in a more faithful manner. Lord, open our minds and our hearts and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This time I'd like to ask our ushers if they would come forward for a morning offering. Let us stand for the doxology, please.
Dear Father, we give thanks for these gifts. We ask your blessings upon them. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remain standing, please. You'll join me with our Apostles' Creed on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Today he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is the uh, handout sheet that... Uh, ran off for today. Uh, revive us again. And you'll notice within this revive us again, it is talking about uh, the, the, the Trinity in some ways, the Holy Spirit uh, being active. So uh, let us see revive us again. These are people that died in military service for their country. You know, it's different. Veterans Day, we honor every single person that's ever served in any of our military branches. But on Memorial Day, it's for those people that have actually died while they were in service. So 
we, we certainly appreciate all that they have done for us. Uh, I ran across a poem it's in, in, by Joyce Kilmer. And some of you remember Joyce Kilmer when we were in school. We had to memorize a poem about a tree. Uh, anyway, she also wrote this poem. It is entitled, uh, De Lucet Decorum Est Pro Petra More. And I certainly don't know what that means, but uh, it told me on, on the page. It says, it is sweet and right to die for your country. And the poem goes like this. The bugle echoes shrill and sweet, but not the war it seems today. The road is rhythmic with the pattern of men at arms who came to pray. The roses blossom white and red on tombs where weary soldiers lie. Flags wave above the honored dead, and martial music cleaves the sky. Above their wreath-strown graves we kneel, they keep the faith and fought the fight. Through flying lead and crimson steel, they plunge for freedom and the right. May we, their grateful children, learn their strength who lie beneath the soil, who went through fire and death to earn at last the accolades of God. In shining rank on rank arranged, they march the legions of the Lord. He is their captain unafraid, the prince of peace who fought a sword. So we are thankful today for those people that died in all of our nation's history in order that we might have the freedoms that we have today. And it's also important that we, as citizens of this country today, that we keep our eyes and ears open to make sure that these freedoms that people died for are not taken away from us. Ron, would you come up and show me the CDs, please? songs. Oh. 
Ronald, thank you so much for sharing today of your beautiful song, Our Things at Home. Thank you for sharing. For our scripture today, I'd like for us to read from John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Again, and I'm reading from the King James Version. The book of John, chapter 16, beginning with verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you. But you cannot hear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On October 24th, Pablo Sandoval did what only three other baseball players in history have done. In the first game of the World Series, San Francisco Giants versus the Detroit Tigers, Pablo hit three home runs in one game. Now, before Pablo, only Babe Ruth, Reggie Jackson, and Albert, and I'm sure I'll mispronounce the name, uh, Pujoas. Pujoas. Say it again, Nick. Pujoas. Okay. Anyway, those three had hit three home runs in a World Series game. Just three of them. Well, this morning, we're studying the Trinity. Guess what? Three in one. It's interesting that the Trinity, which is one of the major beliefs of our Christian faith, and it's been a part of our Christian faith for over 2,000 years, the Trinity is itself, that word, is never mentioned in the Bible. You may not have thought about that. Yet Trinity Sunday is celebrated each year on the Sunday after Pentecost. And it honors not an event, but a reality of our faith. While the Bible does not mention the Trinity by name, it speaks to and supports the reality of the Trinity in many places throughout the Old and the New Testament. From the first chapter of Genesis, we see the words, Let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness. And that's Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. In the book of Isaiah, and I'm going to give a lot of scripture today pointing up the, the Trinity. In the book of Isaiah, we read these words. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. And now the Lord God has sent me and his spirit. That's Isaiah chapter 48, verse 16. In the New Testament, this doctrine is dramatically present at the baptism of Jesus. And we hear these words, And when Jesus had been baptized, suddenly the heavens opened up to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and alighting on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. The Apostle Paul often used a 
Trinitarian benediction. I use this benediction usually when we have a communion. Uh, and it is, is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, uh, these words. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. The Gospel of John is filled with Trinitarian references as well. And our scripture today, the shortest gospel text of the whole year, Jesus speaks of the Spirit and the Father, and he speaks of himself, three in one. Okay, that's the basis for uh, the Trinity, but there's a lot of very practical implications for living that arise from our belief in the Trinity. Look at these examples of practical implications. Uh, for one, the Trinity is a line of communication with us. As Jesus was preparing his disciples for his crucifixion, his death and his resurrection, he told them that while they had much to learn, they were not ready to learn all of it yet. That's in our scripture today. So he would not leave them without help. Indeed, he said in John chapter 14, verse 1, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. God will find a way to communicate with the people he loves. Ultimately, of course, God communicates through His Son as the Word who became flesh. On Pentecost, which was last Sunday, God communicated through the Holy Spirit. Whatever it takes, God speaks in ways that you and I can understand. Another implication. The Trinity teaches us humility. You know, there are no ego problems among the persons in the Trinity. Jesus says of the Trinity, uh, He will glorify me because He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that He will Take what is mine and declare it to you. Now, this means that you and I have God's full attention. That very night, Jesus spoke these words. He and his disciples were there in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus prayed. And Luke twenty-two forty-two 42 tells us what he prayed. He said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done. Likewise, the Trinity helps you and me to be humble. Mark Driscoll wrote, wrote a book, I forgot the name of it right now, but Mark Driscoll wrote these words. He says, while God can be known truly, he cannot be known fully. Let me say it again. While God can be known truly, we know there's a God. We cannot know Him fully. We can't know everything about God. We're not that smart. Uh, there's no way. This forces you and me to be humble in our understanding of God. Still another application. The Trinity lifts up love. John wrote, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 9, these words. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. God's love was revealed among us this way. God sent His only Son to the world 
so that we might live through him. Love originated with God. The three persons of the Trinity show us perfectly what love is like, what it looks like. We are called to love because God loved you and me first. Even when we were still strangers and enemies of God, He loved us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 tells us that. The Trinity also lifts you and me up for worship. As the Spirit glorifies Jesus, we are to glorify God through worship. We worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We do that through our singing. Our, our serving, our praying, our sermons, we focus our attention on God and not on ourselves. It was rightly, or it has rightly been said that in worship we have an audience of one. In lifting up the Trinity, we could amend that and we could say that in worship we have an audience of of one in three. What's more, the Trinity lifts up relationships. From the very beginning, we see the relationship between the persons of the Trinity. John says in John 1, 1, these words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As John lays out his Gospel, he makes it clear that the reason that God the Father sent the Son was that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit wanted to be in relationship with the whole world. And we all know that famous verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. At the end of John's Gospel, he wrote that the purpose of writing his book is so that you and I could come to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in Him, we might have life in His name. John 20, verse 31. God in three persons lays out the perfect example of relationships, and we are invited to that same relationship with God through the work of the Son and the Holy Spirit. In that same way, we are called to love our neighbors and enemies alike and extend hospitality to strangers. Finally, the Trinity relationships teach us that we were not made to live in isolation, but we were made to live as a community. As community is vital to God, it must be vital to us since you and I were made in the image of God. Yet, many of us continue year after year to, quote, go it alone, unquote. Our churches try to go it alone. We guard our turf. We often refuse to acknowledge that God may be at work in other churches around us. You know, this is one of the reasons that we now have a network of Methodist churches right here in this area where the ministers are getting together every once in a while, emailing each other. Uh, we have several things on the drawing board that we're working together. We want to have some blood drives. Uh, we want to... Uh, Come this fall, we want to do some uh, tutoring with, with kids, probably through uh, the Eden Boys and Girls Club. They already have a program set up there that we can help with. And, and a number of things that, that we can do in unity with others that we can't do by ourselves. There was a noted preacher and writer, his name was John Orthberg. 
O-R-T, B-E-R-G, Orthberg. He once wrote an article and he said, Think about life within the Trinity. How do Father, Son, and Holy Spirit relate to each other? Are there lots of arguments over who's the most omnipotent, the most omnipresent, about who's the oldest? Of course not. The answer is obvious. Man is made in God's image. We are called in relationship and community throughout our life and into eternity with God. What is the importance of the Trinity to us today? I hope that by now you're getting the idea that there is much of value in the concept of the Trinity. It is one facet of our faith that separates us from some other religions. It affirms that Jesus was fully God and fully human. Another hard idea that we accept by faith and affirm with all that we are. Someone said that because our God is three in one, it's like having three helplines. And we don't have just one helpline, we got three. And the line is never busy. When we pray to God, we can cry out to God. When we're at the end of our road, we have a God who has a multiple way to respond to our needs. Someone said that we need the assurance of the Heavenly Father when we call Abba. Abba means Daddy. And we find that in Romans chapter 8, 15, where we can call God Abba. Now, not just Father. He's, he's our Daddy who will hold us in our arms, who will comfort us. God the Father is faithful. He hears our cries, and His arms are always open to you and to me. You know, sometimes we need the Son, who has experienced everything in life and yet remained faithful and obedient to the Father. Sometimes we say, we're the only one that's ever suffered this. We're not. Jesus encourages us and he shows us how to live. And beyond that, he gave his life for us so that we can be forgiven regardless of anything that we have done. Praise God. Sometimes we need the Spirit to teach us in the truth and to be a light unto our path. The good news is that whatever our need is, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God in three persons, loves us and offers us all that we will ever need. Isn't that wonderful good news for us? Let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for your presence, for your activeness in our lives right now, and our hope for the future. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Our altar is always open for any joy, any concern that you want to share with our Heavenly Father. I find hymn 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let us stand as we're able. 140.
Lord, as we go out into the world, we ask that you be with us, that you show us the way, tell us what to do, direct us, and help us. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Where are we going to? Blue